Welcome to Alice 3.1. We'll first introduce the Alice interface. In the top left hand corner we have the scene view. To the right of that you have the code editor panel. This is where you will add programming tiles and animations later on after you've set up your scene. And in the bottom left hand corner you have the methods panel which includes procedures and functions. A procedure is a method that performs an action versus a function which is a method that asks a question. To switch from the code editor to the scene editor, I click set up scene here. This brings me to the scene editor and again I will explain the interface. In the top left hand corner we have the object tree which lists all the objects that are in the scene. Top right hand corner we have the methods panel where we can choose between rotation, translation, resize as well as perform one shot procedures which means to take a procedure and execute it once at design time. You have the control panel to set parameters for the scene and in the bottom we have the gallery where all the classes of objects are grouped based on similar properties. Bipeds walk on two legs, flyers fly and have wings, prop classes are inanimate objects, quadrupeds walk on four feet, swimmers are fish, they swim, etc. To return to the code editor, I would click the edit code button. Let's begin with a new project. First I must pick the world in which I will add objects. Select setup scene and now I can add objects. First I'd like to add a chair. You can use the search gallery tab. I can move the camera around using these controls at the bottom. Forward, left, rotate. I can move the object in any one of six directions up, down, left, right, forward or backward. Clicking the translation tool, I can move that object forward, backward, left, right. I can click on the yellow arrows to move the object. I can also rotate the object in any one of three planes using these rotation rings. You'll notice that when I grab the object and move it, there are a number of arrows. White indicates forward, green is up red is right. Now, after moving and rotating some of my objects, it may appear that that object from this view is in the correct position. Here, it does appear that the chair is on the ground. But if I take a look at that scene from different vantage points, for example from the top, I can move in closer. The chair appears to be on the floor. From the side, however, I can clearly see that that chair is floating in space. The horizon is the solid black line and I need that chair to be on the horizon in order to be on the floor. First we'll perform a one shot. We select the chair and from the procedures under the one shots, I have orient to upright. That will take the same orientation as the world. So the up for the chair is the up for the world. And in that case, I can now move the chair using the translation down until it is on the horizon. It appears from this angle that the chair is on the ground. From the front, the chair is on the ground from the top and from my starting camera view. So now the chair is actually on the ground. Next, let's take someone and sit them in the chair. I've added the Mad Hatter to my scene. In order to get the Mad Hatter to sit down, I'm gonna act, have to bend some of his limbs in order to be in a sitting position. So I'm gonna click the Mad Hatter, rotate him, grab his left hip, Using the red ring, I'm going to bring that limb forward, rotating it. Then grab the left knee and rotate it so it's bent at a 90 degree angle. Let's do the same thing with the right leg.
Now I need to move the Mad Hatter into position on the chair. Now let's figure out if the Mad Hatter is indeed sitting on the chair. Let's take a look from the top. Whoa, he's off by a little bit. So I'm going to move him into position on the chair and check the other angles. So now the Mad Hatter is sitting in the chair correctly. 